Greetings and salutations, friends. It's time for the best of three. Today we'll be taking a look at some games that were chosen by some friends of mine. Now, for their sake, I'm not going to use their real names. Uh. However, they'll probably know who they are based on the games that I've chosen. And if they don't, well, I'll use a code name for them, which will either be a name or a sound. This time we're moving from the PlayStation 1 to the PlayStation 2 for these nine humdingers. The first three I'm going to be talking about were chosen by Brightwing. Because World of Warcraft slash 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons game that I am running. Now, the first game chosen has a bit of a reputation of never being talked about ever. Devil May Cry 2. Even though I own the game, I have not played very much of it in about 15 years. But I'm not gonna let that or its reputation stop me. I'm gonna go into this with an open mind. I wanna see what all the hubbub's about. Or lack of hubbub. Yes, I've played only the first one and the second one. I believe I played a little bit of the third Devil May Cry, but I don't remember it very well. Just like I don't remember playing the first one all that well. I do, however, remember playing that game and not getting the sawed off shotgun the first time I played. But I'm not here to talk about that one. Now I know who Dante is, but I don't know who this lady is. And since there's two discs, each disc having either Dante or the other lady, whose name I still can't remember right now, I'm gonna play Dante first. Over the top silly action in the opening cutscene, check. Seems okay so far. Movement's pretty smooth, like butter. No problems there. Well, that's a pretty cool enemy design. What's the problem? Oh, I remember now why nobody talks about this one. The AI is really silly. This game's really, really easy, which is not what I was expecting at all, given the reputation of this series. Starting to see why no one talks about this one. However, bonus points for subverting my expectations. I still don't remember who this lady is, but she has a really cool design and her devil trigger is really neat. See, nice things. Quick recap in case you never watched this before. This is only the second one. My scoring system consists of good, pretty good, meh, not dog shit, and dog shit. <laughs> and then I put it into one of three categories after I score it. Definitely expand upon later, possibly expand upon later, and never ever touch again. Unless somebody picks it. Now, I'm gonna score it with a not dog shit, because again, I've definitely played worse before. It's not that the design, art direction, or any of that stuff is off, it's just, the AI is just really dumb. The game's way too easy. And this is coming from a guy who only typically plays on easy. However, I'm gonna put it in the possibly expand upon later category because silly. Now the next game is a bit unique to me. If you've never watched any of my videos before and this is the first one, thanks. If you have watched them before, then you've probably heard me mention once or twice that I've never played Final Fantasy ever. And that was 100% true until now. Final Fantasy X is a game that's been on my radar for quite some time. Meaning ever since I saw it. Now, even though I only play these games for about 30-ish minutes, I know for a fact this game has a lot more to it. But that's not how this works. This game has to impress me with the time allotted. I played all the way up until the point where the giant sky anus sucks me up, and I gotta be 100% honest with you. Definitely expand upon it later. 
pretty good. The music was great. The world was nice and vibrant and colorful. And all the things you'd expect from a game with fantasy in its title. Oh shit. Final Fantasy X. Final game that she decided to pick just happened to be the first fighting game that I ever sunk any amount of time into whatsoever. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. It's actually pretty funny to go back and play this and reminisce about my first experience with this game because I didn't know anything about Mortal Kombat at all. I was just like, man, this cool guy jumps out of the underworld and meets this other random wizard and they kill this Bruce Lee guy. I had no idea that they killed the two main characters of this entire series right off the bat. This is one of those early 2000 games that has all kinds of neat extras hidden in the menu. One of which is a music video by Edema. Whoever the f that is. Unfortunately, I don't have the original save block that I had for this game, but you'll have to believe me when I say I spent an entire summer unlocking everything in that stupid f***ing graveyard. Ugh. But that's okay. I can get back to the basics and show how good I am at fighting games. As you can see, Scorpion's my jam, and it didn't take long for me to get back into the swing of things. Remembering my killer instincts. It didn't take long for me to hand the computer its ass. So eventually the computer's like, you know what? The only way to beat fire is to throw fire at it. So he beat me with myself. Now personally, I like this game pretty much, but I only played 30 minutes of it and that's all I had to go off of. So I'm gonna score it with a meh and uh, possibly expand upon later. And the winner of this trio is Final Fantasy X because I'm gonna be honest with you, out of all the games that I've played so far with the best of three series, this is the one I really wanna play the most. The next three games were brought to you by the husband of the previous friend who henceforth shall be known as Breach and Clear, boys! Breach and Clear! Don't worry, I'll try to explain that later. First of the three games he's chosen is Maximo, Army of Zen. Pretty sure this is a sequel to Maximo... I have it. What's it called? Ghost to Glory, but that's not the one we're talking about. He didn't pick that one. This is one of those games that I vaguely remember in the dilapidated rundown structure that is my memory palace. But it's made by Capcom, so fingers crossed. Gonna be real. This game's generic as fuck. At least that's the vibe I was getting from it. But there's nothing wrong with that. The cartoony art style is very fun and charming, along with a lot of the sound effects. The music's kind of cheesy. Pretty fun. The army of Zen was an army of robots that are powered by souls that were sealed away 500 years ago by some guy that I don't remember. And his whole family is supposed to watch over it or some shit. I'm gonna be honest, I'm getting all kinds of great value ghosts and goblins vibes, but Capcom made that game too, so I guess they're allowed to rip off their own stuff. This feels like the poster child for meh, if I've ever seen it. And it's gonna get up possibly later. This next game is a bit unique because I am very familiar with the source material. However, I have never actually played a game of said source material. Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles. Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles. Sorry. I must say, right off the bat, they do a very good job of capturing the feel of Naruto. The controls are pretty good and it feels very fluid to Kagibun Sino Jutsu. However, other than that, it's pretty much dog shit. Maybe there's more to this game, maybe there's not. I don't know, I played it for about 30 minutes. Didn't impress me in that amount of time. I don't know, I'm never gonna play this again. Now I'm gonna try to explain that voice real quick and why he is known as Breach and Clear. You see, me and my friends like to play a game called Warhammer 40,000. And we all play a variety of armies, most of the time. And he has decided he wants to start playing for the greater good. And we couldn't decide on how the greater good sounds, so he just started talking like this, boys. <gasps> and the reason I bring that up is because I'm gonna play Tao Fire Warrior, because in his words, not mine, I'm gonna get you to play Tao one way or another, sir. Now, I don't know the exact time frame that this game was originally released, but 
I got a sneaking suspicion it probably came out around the same time that the Tau first came out. However, I could be wrong. But judging by this very old and very dated Games Workshop ad within the game, I'd say I'm probably right. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a big fan of first-person shooters. And you're probably going to hear me say that a lot on this channel. And then play several first-person shooters because there are exceptions. But I'm going to try to put that aside and give this game a fair shake. And I'm going to try to ignore the fact that I don't like fish people. Because I'm allergic. All joking aside, though, it's pretty meh. It kind of, sort of captures the feel of the 41st millennium. I guess from the perspective of the Tau. But it was pretty average. Like, really average. Like, forget what I said about Maximo being the poster child for meh. This one's probably the post of child first person, man. However, I am going to put it in the possibly expand upon later category because I might be able to get some sillies out of this. Max Army Zen's gonna win this triple threat. All right, Buckaroonies, these last three games were chosen by my friend Goliath Fawcett. You're not supposed to understand that. Hopefully, he gets it and has a good chuckle. Now, first game he chose has also been on my radar for quite some time, especially since I was a child and first found the movie. And it became my favorite movie very quickly. The Thing. Frankenstein is my favorite book. The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, is my favorite movie. Resident Evil is my favorite video game series. See the correlation? This game just oozes early 2000s era horror video games. And from the very small amount that I did happen to play, it captured the feeling of John Carpenter's The Thing very, very nicely. In fact, it captured the feel of the movie so perfectly that I couldn't take any chances. And I just went ahead and killed everybody because I know I'm not The Thing. Now I know what you're saying. Tim just spilled his guts about how much he loves this genre and style of game and how The Thing is his favorite movie. There's no way he's going to give it a fair shake. He's going to give it the best score possible and we're all going to screech at him. Well, you'd be wrong. This game's getting a meh because it's pretty meh, at least from what I played. However, I will 100% be expanded upon it later because I already plan to do that. Mr. Fawcett just allowed me to play it a little sooner and confirm my suspicions. And even though I gave it a meh when I play it in full eventually, I'm sure it'll probably lean in the something good direction. But not too good. Almost good, if you will. Almost good being the title of another series I plan to do here soon. Wow, Tim, you're really killing it with these titles, aren't you, bud? You're not supposed to be on these. You're right, you're right. You know where I'll be. Now, while we're on the subject of meh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. I used to watch wrestling back in the day. I don't really watch it anymore. I played SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 and 2008 a lot. Like a lot, a lot. But this is the first time I've ever played SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, so I was kind of excited. You can have the AIs fight each other. So that's pretty cool. Can't do that in a lot of games. So I just hit random on both, and we're going to have ourselves a match. Of Hulk Hogan versus Paul London. Of which, Paul London wins because eventually the AI just got sick of fighting Hulk Hogan and hit him with a chair. It's honestly pretty funny. This game's meh. 
and ever plan on playing this particular SmackDown vs. Raw ever again. Maybe the other ones. And finally, we come to Mr. Fawcett's final pick. Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Out of the big 3D... 3... Mortal Kombat games that were on the PlayStation 2 era, I never played Armageddon. I only played Deadly Lions and Deception, so this was a new experience for me. Hmm. I'm in a pickle. I don't know whether or not to give this a meh or a not dog shit. It's not dog shit. I'm gonna give it a not dog shit. Mainly because the opening cinematic is pretty neat. And it's got a large selection of characters. It has this mini kart racing thing. Which was really bad. Yeah, it's getting a not dog shit. And I'm never playing this again. Even though I enjoy old wrestling stuff, I gotta give this one to The Thing, obviously. Much like Final Fantasy X, this game seems to have a lot of potential, especially for longer form videos. So I'm looking forward to this. Don't let me down. Like I said, eventually I'll get to those two. Final Fantasy X. And the thing. In long form videos, but... Don't hold your breath, because I got lots of other stuff ahead of that. Anyway, I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Now. Get the fuck out of my house.